Hey people, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be doing a review of the Yeba V2 Mini Video Projector. This is a sub US $100 budget projector. For your convenience, this video has been split into segments. So if you're in the rush, you can skip to the specific chapter markers below, but to get the full lowdown and to help make the video more easily found, watching from start to finish works best. So why am I doing this? Well, this is one of seven videos I'm making about video projectors. I'm doing this because about a month ago, I was organizing a family event and it worked out cheaper to buy a projector than to rent one from the venue. However, when I did my initial research, I found it incredibly confusing. There's just so much information out there and ironically, it's sometimes incomplete, making it totally impossible to do any proper comparisons. And worse still, as I found out, some of the information is just plain wrong. So, I ended up ordering a bunch of them to test them out and find out which was the best value projector for my use case. These videos are a summary of everything I've learned. I'll be shifting through all the noise to share with you what I think is important, as well as verifying and correcting any misinformation I discover. Check out the other review videos, including a full comparison of all six projectors I tested in the description below. Full disclaimer, any product links may contain affiliate links meaning a small percentage of the sale may go to me. Key thing is, you won't be paying anymore, and this helps reward me a little for the time and effort I've spent producing this video. Thanks in advance. Having said that, my goal here is to provide you the best information to help you make the best informed choice for your own situation. Even if none of the projectors I've reviewed suit you, I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two on what to look out for in your search for your perfect projector. The review will be split into three key parts. Firstly, I'll be checking and confirming the specifications. Then we'll be unboxing and taking a tour of the hardware and software. Plus most importantly, evaluating the real world performance. Let's get started. First up, we're gonna check the specs based on the website. We're here at the usamazon.com website. And we're looking at the Yeba version two Wi-Fi mini 7500L projector. Now, just bear in mind here, I am in Australia and I reviewed a different uh, one. It was actually 6,000 um, 6, lumens. So the American one right now is a slightly supposedly better spec one. Just keep that in mind. Uh, 130 US dollars here and you can actually get $40 off. So always check where there's a coupon that you can apply to save a bit of money. Now the key thing here is that this is a 720p um, projector, not 1080p, because that does say 1080p full HD and 300 inch supported. So it supports 1080p input, but it doesn't actually give 1080p in output. It's actually 1280 by 720, which is 720p. Uh, just that key distinction there on the specs. Uh, everything else seems to check out on the website. Uh, see all the specs there, all the details, which we'll check in the box when we open, unbox it. If you go to the UK, it's at about 90 pounds. This is a slightly higher spec model than the one I reviewed at 6,500 apparently. Uh, it goes up to 236 inches. So very good size. And again, 720p, okay? It's 720p, not 1080p. Uh, interestingly, one of the key things I, I need to mention in all these reviews is that please verify your information. Don't trust everything that's actually on the uh, written, the spec page, on the product information page. Because here is something that's not very important. It says it, it weighs 193. It's actually weighs just under a kilo. But it just does highlight that the information that is presented on the information page may not necessarily always be correct. And it could be, if it's something that's more and here it is, look at that. It says display resolution 4K Ultra HD. That is very, very bad misinformation, all right? The weight doesn't matter so much, but if you actually buy this thinking you're getting a 4K Ultra HD projector, you're gonna be very disappointed. Uh, so just make sure you check all the information, verify it with another website, even just across Amazon uh, websites in different countries, you'll see sometimes the information is different which is uh, very strange indeed. Um, okay, so actually see the, the weight is actually the package, not the item itself. I don't know why they put package dimensions, doesn't really matter unless you're trying to calculate the cost of postage, which is generally irrelevant anyway. 
but yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, you see 2.2 pounds, that is uh, closer to the actual weight of the device. Um, pretty much the same spec information here, uh, slightly. And look here, again, um, we've got some incorrect information here. It says full HD 1080p and up here it's 720p. So be aware, uh, if you're unsure, see if you can contact uh, some, <laughs> try and contact Amazon if you're unsure, if you wanna just double check the resolution, but the information is, is contradicting itself even on the same uh, page. In Australia here, it says 720p. If we go down to the date data down in the bottom here, uh, what have we got? 720p, so it's consistent here, but in the other ones, it's different. And again here, this is wrong. This is, it's actually less than a kilo. So just be aware, don't trust all the information there. Always double check, but I'm here to help you with that. So I'm here to verify that the one I, that the one I reviewed was 720p. Um, it is uh, 6,000 lumens and it weighs about a kilo, not 1.92. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look what's inside the Yeber Mini Video Projector V2. Okay, opening the box. First up, of course, we have the projector in protective bubble wrap. And we've got that. We've also got a very thick instruction manual. Okay, this is, I guess is just a little quick start. Oh, it's a little troubleshooting guide. All right, it's got different languages and colors. This is kind of cool. What's this? Oh, wow, it comes with a simple projector screen. That's very cool. This is an 80 inch screen it comes with and it looks like it's got some uh, stickies, do not wash. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we've also got this other box. Let's see what's in this box here. How does this open up? It's one of these. Okay, so we've got a HDMI cable, a, uh, what do you call it? A AV connector, old school power cable. So we've got some cleaning cloth as well and a remote control. No batteries though. Okay, that's pretty cool. Put these aside and let's take a look at the device itself. So here on the top, futuristic uh, branding there. We've got our uh, focus ring. We've also got a keystone ring really like these manual keystones a lot less fiddly than having to go through a menu system it does have all the control buttons here i do find these rather small and very hard to see especially if your eyesight's not so good but what we've got here is a power button a source button so you can click through your different sources okay left left right and then here's a back button all right so that's the top on the back we've got our speaker power an infrared port and on the side we've got our inputs we've got a headphone jack for putting in an external speakers or headphones of course our AV jack for the old school devices such as VCRs DVD players etc we've got two USB ports one's labeled USB T and not quite sure what that is uh, I'll leave that in the notes and uh, HD HDMI port and a VGA cable for the old school monitors on the bottom, we have rubber feet and a tripod stand connection point and nothing on that side. And we've got a cap as well, it seems. There we go. The Yeber Mini Wi-Fi Video Projector. It's now time to check out the operation and menu system. Let's give the Yeber for a spin, turning it on. A little bit of a delay there. At least a little bit more modern start screen. And we are going to press into the source button, which gives us the option of moving, toggling between the different sources. 
whether you're doing some airplay or mirror cast, AV, VGA, and HDMI. And then we go to home. Okay, this gives you the option of playing media from your USB or the, uh, the USB or thumb drive. There's two USB ports on this, uh, which is quite a lot. Now we're gonna go into settings and let's have a look at picture mode. Picture mode, we've got different picture modes as well as a user where you can go in and make adjustments individually to contrast, brightness, color, and sharpness. I'm just gonna leave it on standard. Come back out here. We've got color temperature. Um, you've got some user options, cool. I'm just gonna leave it on medium. Come back out. Aspect ratio. So let's have a look at the options here. So you've got auto. I tend just to leave things on auto just to make it easier. However, I'm pressing the button and it's not wanting to move. Okay, it must be a bit of a software glitch there. Not so good. Okay, projection mode. So depending on whether you're putting on the ceiling, upside down, from the back, um, you can toggle that to work out the best way for your setup. Uh, we've got zoom. Now this allows you to zoom in. Unfortunately, when you do this, it doesn't actually show you how it looks while it's zooming. Um, so not very useful. even though you have that feature. Uh, and then we've got Keystone. Now, this is, un this is strange that there is a digital uh, adjustment there. We've actually got a manual adjustment here, which I like the manual, it's just a lot easier to change and fine tune. But it looks like there's also a digital Keystone. And let's see how that looks. There you go. So you can see that that works as well. So you got a digital and manual, quite surprising. All right, coming back out. So just to check, okay, so that's all the settings there are. Oh, and then you've got this option. So this is kind of weird that it just goes to this, but you don't see all the options. So if I didn't press that left and right button, I would have known that there was also a sound, uh, option here, you can see the different modes, picture, sound, time, you've got a timer, Let's see what options there, Oops. and yep, there's definitely a glitch here because I can't actually make adjustment there, so maybe it needs a software update. Okay, let's get out of there, that's it for the Yaber menu system. I'll be testing the performance of the projector for my real life impressions, as well as by the numbers. Key things I'll be testing are brightness. I'll be using a light meter and measuring the brightness on the screen in the center and at the corners at two different distances, about two and 3.5 meters, which is about six and 10 foot respectively for my old school friends. I'll also be measuring the size of the image at these two distances and testing the operating noise using my audio meter on my Apple Watch. For real life performance, I'll be giving my personal take on the quality of video projected using a combination of film footage and some dynamic footage I've edited together from awesome footage shot by professionals. Thank you, Sony and DJI.
By the way, I've also uploaded this edited footage so you can see how the video looks directly on your monitor. Link below. Let's see the projector now in action with some cinematic footage from Shang-Chi. Hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how the projector performs on the screen in the dark. Let's have a look at the numbers now. Looking at the screen size first, at 2 meters, you're going to get a 64 inch or 163 centimeter image. And at 3.5 meters, you're getting a 292 centimeter or 115 inch image. Now, looking at the brightness, we can see here at two meters, we're getting a reading of about 144. And one of the big things you'll notice when you're looking at here is the drop off on the edges. And we're pretty much getting nearly a 50% drop off or actually nearly a 60% drop off, an average around 55.8% drop off. And at 3.5 meters, you'll notice that the drop off is actually even higher. So not only will you have a less bright image at a greater distance, but the image consistency is also going to be less. Final thing we're going to have a look at is the projector noise. And you can see here uh, on top of the projector, this one's a slightly more noisy projector at 51 decibels above the 37 decibels of the ambient sound. But as you move away, um, two to three meters away, it's at 39. And this is really very, very, uh, not much difference to the ambient sound of the room. And when you're playing a movie, you definitely won't be noticing the sound of the projector. Over here, we have the Lux reference table, just to give you an idea of what those numbers mean or what they equate to. Uh, two key ones that you can use as a reference point is the light in a dining room is around 160 and the light that you have in corridors and in common areas somewhere around 40 to 80, just to give you a reference. The Yeba V2 overall does a good job as a 720p projector and is priced competitively in the sub 100 US dollar market. Image was good, sound was okay. I would definitely recommend connecting some better speakers for a home cinema setup. And as a bonus, it also came with a condenser screen which supposedly improves brightness by 25%, though I didn't have the time to test this unfortunately. Overall, I give it a 6.5 out of 10 for performance and a 7 out of 10 for value for money. Love to know what you think, especially if you got one, hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the other projector review videos in the description, including the comparison review of all six projectors. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss any future videos from me. See ya!